Hey guys, welcome back to another review of Insecure. This is season four, episode number six, and this is called Low Key Done. So this episode starts off with Issa laying in the bed, replaying the huge fight that her and Molly had. Um, she opens up her phone and she's reading all of the feedback from the block party. So everybody is loving it. Like the comments are like, oh my God, you need to do this again. Like, oh my God, like you had, um, I forgot his name, but you know, she had a, a really big artist. So then she checks her voicemail and the first voicemail is from her brother and he's like don't let that molly f shit bother you like you did an amazing job and like i'm so proud of you and then he's like starting to say why did mom is calling me but then she um clicks off the voicemail and then she goes to the intern's voicemail and you know she's all about business um I did watch Funky Deneva's review and he said that she um, gives off Kiki Palmer vibes and the intern does. Like when I watched it today, I was like, she does kind of sound like her. And then the third voicemail was from Kelly and Kelly is always that comic relief. So Kelly is like, she, Kelly has Tiffany's baby and the baby is just screaming and she's like the baby is looking for food and she's like ain't no food in these and then it's a week then she's always the comic relief i do agree with funky when he said that he wants to see layers to kelly i would like to see her go through something i would like to see some more about her family some more about her like i think that'll be really cool because i really like kelly so Issa goes into the restroom, you know, where she talks to herself and she's contemplating whether or not she wants to reach out to Molly. And me personally, I feel like she shouldn't because even in the mirror, she's saying like, I'm always the one that reaches out to her. I'm always the one that tries to make things right. Like at some point, Molly has to take accountability for her actions. Like for, friendships are two-sided and we already know I'm over Molly because Molly doesn't know how to support Issa when the attention is not on her. So, so she does her self-care Sunday by herself, relate, relax, release by herself. And, um, you know, it's still bothering her. So she ends up laying back down, but you can tell she, she really wants to reach out to Molly, but something in her is telling her not to because she's always the person to fix it so he says in the grocery store and this pregnant young lady is like can somebody help me can somebody help me buy my stuff and you know you know how when you're in the store you're like oh lord or you <laughs> sitting in your car like somebody coming up to your car you're like oh please don't come up to my car please don't come up to my car Lord, please you you pray because you know they're coming so um she comes up to isa well isa sees her and she's like Hey, I'll pay for it. So the lady rings it up. It's like $154. So the lady swipes Issa's card and it declines. And then Issa's like, oh no, I'll try it again. Like, I don't know why it's not working. So she tries it again and it declines again. And the girl was like, you know what? That's okay. You gave me perspective. Cause you know, Issa was like, you know, put out the energy you want back. Like, so, you know, she's being nice to people because people were nice to her like you gotta think like nathan helps her with the event and you know she did have a really good turnout so why not bless somebody else and um she said girl that baby ain't here anyway so she ain't need all that so Issa ends up getting some wine and i guess the card worked so then Issa's leaving the store she sees this old man trying to um flag down the bus and the bus just keeps going and he's an old man y'all mr george so Issa asked him if he wants to ride and he's like i don't trust these lifts and these dovers like i don't trust it and Issa's like no like i do do lift but i'm doing this as me like i just want to be nice basically and he was like all right don't try nothing i don't hit ladies but i slap a bitch <laughs> old people is so cute it's so funny because they're so freaking dramatic and so the whole ride like first it's too hot then it's too cold then it's like 
watch out. And like Issa slams on the brake and he's like, nah, you just gotta watch out in life. And then he takes out this picture and it's the house. And when he opens the, he knocks on the door, it's his son. His son is like, dad. So I don't know what that was. Comment down below if you understood that. I didn't understand that part. I was a little confused. Um, so Issa is like on her way to a sip and paint. Um, she gets there. She sits next to three other ladies. One of them, which was Kyla Pratt. Um, it was her like bachelorette trip. Issa came in. I don't know if y'all ever bought it, but it's that big old jug of wine. Like, it's a lot of wine. It might be a gift. I don't know. Don't misquote me. But it's a big old thing of wine. Like, I would, like, nobody normally says, oh, I'm going to take this big ass thing to the wine, uh, to the sip and paint. So, um, she's sitting there laughing with the other ladies. They're all best friends, obviously. And they're talking about how they've gotten into it, but now they're over it. And, you know, they started drawing, they were doing their pictures and they were turning out looking like man's pings instead of what, cactuses. And so they were making jokes about it. It was a good time. So then they ask Issa, cause you know, Issa's from LA. So they ask Issa, oh, we're going for drinks. Do you want to come? So, you know, they're eating kiki, ha ha, and they're asking Issa, what does she do? And Issa's like, you know, I do stuff with celebrities. Like, they're, they're, they're trying to see, you know, so what I thought, trying to see, like, you know, they're gassing her up. And she's like, oh my God, y'all gassing me up. Cause, you know, she's saying she's basically into marketing and all of this. So one of the girls says, I gotta go to the restroom. Issa gets up, goes to the restroom too. So they're in the restroom. You know how girls talk. We talk while we're peeing. But I didn't like that they actually sit down on them toilets, baby. Three point stance, okay? So the girl is asking her, like, where do I find the niggas? Where do I find the niggas? And she's asking her this, but then Issa realizes that the girl stops responding. So I don't know if that girl has like ninja like reflexes, but the girl ends up out of the restroom and Issa is like looking under the stall and the girl is not there. I thought they was going to be nice. See, this is me seeing the good in people. Issa goes back to the table, and there's the scavenger hunt list. Um, and one of the, some of the things on there was to befriend a stranger in Dine and Dash. So not only did they befriend Issa, but they left her with a big ass bill. We know Issa ain't got the money. So what's she going to do, pay with her looks? So Issa, so we see it, the scene shift and Issa's in her car and she rolls up on the girls. Like she sees them walking and she takes the painting and plops it on the girl's head and like cussing them out. But we, she snaps back into reality. She's just sitting there. She does see them, but she doesn't do anything. She does call somebody and says, hey, can I come over? And when she knocks on the door, we realize that it's her mom, it's Rindy Raquel Robinson, you know, we love her. And, um, you know, as soon as she get in there, she's supposed to like, why wasn't I invited? And she was like, mama, you said, you, you, mama, you don't like crowds. And she was like, you don't like crowds of black people. And she was like, I don't like crowds of anything. And so there was a pause and her mother's intuition kicked in and was just like, come here, come give me a hug. Y'all, that was just, I don't got no mama. So that was, that was dope. Like, you know, mamas know, and I feel like, you know, my aunt is like this to me, like she'll know when something is wrong with me, but I thought that was just so cute. Like her mama knew it was something wrong with her without her even having to say it. Like, Sorry, y'all. That, that, I really almost teared up at that part because I think it's just so wonderful. Like, when you have a mom, like, they're just so in tune with you. Um, So, her mom hugs her and she boo-hoos. Like, she cries. Like, I've never seen in all of the seasons Issa break down like this. So, then it shifts to her and her mom talking. And they're just, you know, reminiscing on, you know, her growing up. And her not really realizing that her mom saw all of these amazing things in her. And that's why I think it's so important 
that when you have kids, although you want them to grow up tough, you want to make sure you breathe life into them because they can manifest later. And she didn't even know her mom was super duper proud of her, maybe because her mom never said it. And um, again, like that really made me think, like especially, I don't know if this is in any other communities, but I know in the black community, it is very important that you have people to uplift you so that you know you know that they are proud of you like i there's no doubt in my mind that my family isn't proud of me like growing up like i know they've always been proud of me because they voiced it they've told me when they're disappointed they voiced it um so baby go tell your kids that you're proud of them and and all that they do okay okay and her mom says something her mom says your your, your season may be changing Y'all, and that's a word. That is a word. Your season may be changing. You may be entering a new season. And you're going through growing pains. And she's like, mama, I'm 30. Like, why am I going through this? You know, and that was some wisdom right there. Like, some people are meant to be in your life for a season, a reason, and a lifetime. And sometimes we hold on to people that are only supposed to be for a season. And sometimes we grow, outgrow people. And that's okay. And sometimes it stings and sometimes it hurts because we're we're so used to what makes us comfortable that we don't like to be pushed and pulled into different directions. And I think it hit Issa a lot. And it was a lot of like from the, the young girl that was pregnant to the old man to, you know, her sitting down with the ladies at the simp and pay and to food. I think we see throughout this episode, Issa is having this realization, you know, maybe things are going to change. Like maybe me and Molly, our friendship has come, it has run its course and we're done. Um, this is probably by far my favorite episode, like of this season so far. This has been my favorite episode. Um, she finally answers Kelly's call and Kelly is like, hello, this is Kelly. Like, he's just like, yeah, you called me. I'm just returning your call. She was like, girl, you've been ignoring, ignoring me like my biological father. Again, Kelly is, I love Kelly. I love her character. I would love to see her in more things. And Issa is asking Kelly, because what well, Kelly is telling Issa, hey, have you reached out to Molly? And Issa's like, are you directing the same energy to Molly? Because it's always on me. I shouldn't have to always be basically the mature one in the friendship. Like, if Molly was the If y'all want to talk about it, Molly was wrong. Y'all already know how I feel. Molly shouldn't have... I'm telling you, Issa should have knocked that bob off her head. Because not only did you... No, you, you messed up. And you ruined one of the biggest events of my life. That conversation could have been had elsewhere. So y'all already know how I feel about last week's episode. If you haven't, go watch my review from last week. And Kelly was just like, you know, y'all need to fix it before it's too late. Y'all, because me and Tiffany almost waited too long to have our conversation. So, you know, Issa gets off the phone with her. Issa gets home. Issa lights one up. And she's, you know, reading. She's reading the comments from the block party again. And, you know, people are like, oh, my God, when are we going to see this? Oh, my God, those tacos were bomb. And it's so uplifting because not only is she making a name for herself, but she is also giving small black businesses, um, more business and giving them some some shot like you know people want to know all of these things and she says that she is going to continue this she's like i got something coming so i'm excited to see what Issa does in regards to the block party in future seasons so Issa puts one in the air you know she got hungry she looked at her refrigerator and realized she threw everything out so she was she went to the ethiopian spot and as she walks up to the door, she sees Molly sitting there. And, you know, Issa had one of those moments like, do I go into the store and I'm going to have to confront Molly? Like, we're going to have to have this conversation. Issa got back in her car. 
And I ain't even mad. Like, self-care is the best care. Like, you can't help people that don't want to be helped. And you can't, like, Molly is wrong in this instance. Like, I could understand if Issa was wrong, but Molly is dead wrong. Like, I see both sides, but I'm leaning more towards Issa because Molly should not have did what she did at Issa's event. And Issa, I don't know if I did mention this earlier, but Issa did reach out to Nathan and say, you know, thank you for what you did. I don't want you to feel like I did this. I was using you to get the artist. And, you know, he's like, no, nah, like, it's cool. Like, your event was dope. Like, you know, basically, it's what I wanted to do with his sticks. He said with the green eyes. He's so fine to me. But, yeah, this was season four, episode six, low-key done. And it was my favorite episode of the season thus far. I am getting ready to shoot Married to Medicine LA. So make sure you look for that video either after this or it will be tomorrow because I still got to edit. Thank you for watching.